Hello guys, Winston here. Last year I set out to answer a relatively simple question. How well does the Shapeoko 3 handle cutting aluminum? And the response was pretty awesome in the sense that I learned a ton about different people's strategies for tackling aluminum. Sometimes I feel like I'm making these videos to help myself more than anyone else. Anyhow, in the course of making my aluminum video, I neglected to discuss some of the improvements I made to my setup before I put end mill to metal. Aluminum can be a very unforgiving material, and there were some precautions I wanted to take. The first on my list was to get my wasteboard to machine level, that is, perfectly parallel to the XY plane of my CNC. Otherwise, your machine might end up cutting deeper than expected halfway through your first pass. You can level your shape oko in one of two ways. The first would be to adjust the attachment points of your gantry rails to your base frame. This isn't really feasible on the Shape Oko 3 though, because there's not enough clearance in the mounting holes to make any appreciable adjustments. The second method is to machine your wasteboard to a fixed depth to mask any pre-existing imperfections. This is how I chose to attack the problem. Because I didn't want to directly carve into my pristine wasteboard, I got myself a nice large piece of quarter inch MDF that would cover the majority of my Shape Oko's reachable work area, about 14 by 16 inches. Then, I cut some strips of MDF that would serve as the X and Y axis guides for aligning my stock material. I glued these to the bottom and left edges of my 2B leveled work surface. Next, I planned out a hole pattern for securing my leveled surface to any work pieces that would rest on top. I anticipated using sheets of stock that were anywhere from 6 to 12 inches square, so I added in some threaded inserts at the appropriate locations. Then came the slow part. Because I was making this up as I went along, and I'd be approaching the limits of the X and Y axes, I didn't want to use a program to level my work area, not without limit switches anyway. I would be doing this manually. I set up some hard stops on the near side of my X and Y axes using clamps, and fixed my spindle Z height so that I would be shaving just a few millimeters off my MDF sheet. Then, it was just a simple but tedious matter of reaching the entire surface of my work area. I also cut slightly into the X and Y guides that I had glued on earlier to guarantee that the exposed surfaces were parallel with the machine axes. The end result is an area that is easily within 1mm of Z height deviation from corner to corner. Not quite perfect, but close enough that I really didn't care. The other big thing on my pre-aluminum to-do list was to set up some shields around my Shaboko to keep aluminum shavings from getting everywhere. This is, after all, a carpeted living room, and I need to maintain at least some semblance of order and cleanliness in the house. As it is, the stock shape Oko 3 barely fits through a standard width doorway, so building a proper enclosure for it was out of the question. I didn't really have the time to make one properly anyway. Instead, I went with the cheapest and quickest option, a PVC frame. I bought a handful of couplers and 30 feet of half inch PVC. These I cut to a rough length before trimming them to fit the height and width constraints I had decided upon. For a dirt cheap transparent barrier, I bought a shower curtain and stretched it across the frame. It really doesn't get any simpler than this. Now that I had my workbench set up for cutting aluminum, it was time to address the tools I'd be using. As per I like to make stuff's suggestion, I'd be using a 1 8 inch carbide end mill with aggressive 45 degree helical flutes. This would aid in evacuating aluminum chips from my cuts, and it also has a relatively short half inch length of cut which would minimize deflection at the tip. I planned on using this with my DC spindle, but in case I needed higher RPMs and torque, I also bought a collet reduction bushing that would let me use 8 inch end mills in the quarter inch collet of my DeWalt 611. And for the record, I found that loss of accuracy when using the bushing was negligible. Like maybe a couple thousands at most. Nothing I would ever lose sleep over. My plan B was to use a quarter inch three flute carbide end mill. This was a geometry I'd seen Edward Ford using in his workshop, so I knew it had a high probability of working. With these preparations completed, I finally felt ready to tackle aluminum. I want to thank y'all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with more CNC related projects.